don't know about you, but it seems to me today everything is about the reboot, going back to something good from the past and redoing it in a more modern way. Obviously, movies and TV shows are top of the list, but this trend extends well beyond the entertainment industry. Everything from camper trailers to food mixers and blenders are taking on a vintage vibe, and it's working. It's no surprise that as you get older, you tend to become a little bit more nostalgic. Going back and thinking about the good old days when you were younger, cooler, and faster than you are today. So why wouldn't a product that helps you go back and relive those times be appealing? The snowmobile industry has seen this trend over the past decade as well. What once was great has become great again with the rebirth of the XCR and the Indy from Polaris, the LT Grey and the Thundercat from Arctic Cat, the TNT and the Blizzard from Skidoo, and most recently, the Snow Scoot from Yamaha. But Yamaha wasn't satisfied with just rebirthing the Snow Scoot. They had something much bigger in mind. There are only a handful of sleds that have come and gone over the years that carry a legacy as strong as Yamaha's SRX 700 Triple Triple. This sled was famous for being way faster than it should be and routinely putting down sleds with more displacement. But as fast as it was, it did have quite the list of drawbacks. Most notably would be poor ride quality and almost non-existent handling. So yes, while the SRX does have an incredibly strong legacy, that fame also brings with it some notoriety. Snowmobiles have advanced light years beyond their 15-year-old counterparts. Everything from suspension to ergonomics and performance and economy has changed drastically. And so too has Yamaha's SRX. This new rebooted version brings with it all of the speed and performance of its namesake, but adds all the modern advancements in ride and handling we've come to expect. So what is an SRX besides just a name and a retro look? Well, it starts out as a Sidewinder with Yamaha's SRV front end and 137-inch DualShock SR skid frame out back. A set of three Fox IQS remote adjustable shocks comes standard on the front end and the rear track shock with a regular QS3 on the front arm. But this is where things take a bit of a non-traditional turn. Because the SRX is aimed directly at high-speed lake running, the whole suspension system has been lowered. Now don't worry, this drop in ride height was achieved by the use of dual rate springs instead of shortened shocks. So while the sled does sit lower on the snow, it still has the same 10 inches of front and 13.5 inches of rear end travel. The dual rate springs are initially softer but have the same end force, which is what allows the sled to sit lower while still maintaining a plush ride and the anti-bottoming characteristics we've come to expect from this chassis. Fox IQS technology is as important as their manually adjusted QS3 counterparts were a few seasons ago. A handlebar mounted toggle switch is pressed straight in to activate the IQS portion of the left side of the gauge cluster. It can then be rocked left or right to select the three modes of compression damping available. No, it's not an intelligent system that does the thinking for you. But if you stop and really think about how often you actually adjust even your current QS3 shocks, you'll likely see, as we did, but it's really not that often. With IQS though, you can and will definitely adjust your shocks dozens, if not more times per day. It's a system that works as promised and is more useful than you can ever imagine. So what else sets the SRX apart from a standard Sidewinder and makes it the standout lake racer it's been designed to be? Well, any high-speed junkie knows one of the key factors in going fast is your track. And this is something Yamaha had to take a serious look at. A fast track is one with lower lug heights, but with 180 plus horsepower on tap, Yamaha couldn't afford to sacrifice too much traction in its quest for big numbers. So they settled on a one inch lug Ripsaw Series 1 track that is fully clipped. Also, the decision was made to only offer the SRX in a 137 inch track length. This gave the best compromise between high speed and traction, and I can say confidently that it definitely does work really well. On top of the track, a new rear axle design with 8-inch idler wheels helps lower rolling resistance even further. The SRX gets all of the other new updates you'll find on other Sidewinder models, including all new handlebar switch gear and the new Hayes Master Cylinder and Shorty Brake Lever. But at the end of the day, the question on everybody's minds is an important one. Is this new SRX reboot an overachiever like the old one was? Is it enough to put the boots to anybody you're going to come across on the lake? And the answer is yep. This sled is a missile, equally as powerful as any other Sidewinder with a few tweaks to help you achieve the tallest top speed numbers you can possibly get out of a stock sled. 
But the real beauty of this SRX is that it's not simply a one-trick pony. This sled definitely rocks on the lake, but it's also comfortable to ride and easy to handle on the trails. It's everything the old SRX was and everything the old SRX wasn't. If you've enjoyed this video and would like to see more content from Snowtracks TV, click the like button and subscribe to the Snowtracks TV YouTube channel.